Hello. PCCL Channel greets you. If we are talking about radioactivity, it is because we are talking about the nucleus. That is to say protons and neutrons which are held together by a strong interaction which ensures the cohesion of the nucleus. If a nucleus has too much matter, or energy, it will disintegrate, that is, it will seek to get rid of it. We say he's unstable. In order to seek to become stable, he will relieve himself of what encumbers him. There are three decay modes, alpha, beta, and gamma. We can even count four since there is beta plus and beta minus. What happens in the case of alpha decay? It is a nucleus that has too many nucleons. It will get rid of four nucleons at the same time. Two neutrons and two protons. This is an alpha particle which is nothing other than the helium nucleus. Here it is a nucleus which has too many positive charges apparently, since it gets rid of positrons, it is because it has too many protons. At that moment, a proton will change into a neutron and you understand that there is the symmetrical here. Where a neutron changes into a proton by releasing an electron. These two particles are matter and antimatter so that when they meet they annihilate as matter to give energy. The gamma radioactivity here, is not the result of excess matter. It is not strictly speaking a disintegration. Rather, it is a de-excitation. It is an excited nucleus which will become de-excited by releasing energy. This nucleus must fall back to its ground state. Alpha particle Positron Electron Photon Learn the vocabulary. You must also know how to recognize equations. The parent nucleus, that we call X Z, will give here a daughter nucleus. Since the mass number must be kept at the time of alpha decay, the daughter nucleus will have lost four nucleons. So A minus four. And it will change its name. That's why it is called Y since does not have the same atomic number. On Mendeleev's table we will have to look for Z minus two. If we know Z, we find Z minus two since it has lost two protons. Here Z minus one. Since it has lost a positive charge, there is Z plus 1, because it has lost a negative charge. And here it will be the same name. He keeps the name Y here because he didn't disintegrate. It's just that he was too excited, so if he was too excited it can be done in two parts. In three times even, until it regains its ground state which is the stable state. A stable nucleus is a nucleus which is not radioactive. I come back to beta decay, a proton changing into a neutron by releasing a positron and an electron neutrino which is not mentioned here, and the symmetrical here, a neutron can transform into a proton by releasing an electron and an electron antineutrino. This is called here the weak interaction. After the strong interaction we have the weak interaction. I will now tell you about the electromagnetic interaction that explains this discrepancy here. I present to you the value of stability. If we draw the graph of n, number of neutrons, as a function of z, number of protons, the stable nuclides are found here on this black curve, which deviates from the first bisector, z equals n. Even if both are confused at the beginning, for small numbers of mass, light nuclei. So why? because there is a repulsive electromagnetic interaction. The positively charged protons tend to repel each other. This can destabilize the nucleus. It is therefore a question of drowning, of diluting this electromagnetic force by having more neutrons. The neutron-proton ratio can be up to 1.5. 3 for 2. A nuclide that is here, to the left of the value of stability will try to descend into the valley to become stable.
the minimum energy position is here, on the black line. So to come down, it will undergo a beta minus decay. Why? Because it lacks protons. Look at the z axis. To have a proton, a neutron can change into a proton. This is beta minus decay. The nucleides on the other side of the valley will also seek to join the valley of stability. But undergoing beta plus decay. As they have too many protons, their proton can change into a neutron through beta plus decay. Alpha decay, on the other hand, concerns nuclei that are too heavy, which release mass, that is to say four nucleons at the same time. One application of natural radioactivity is radiocarbon dating. All living organic matter contains carbon-14. The concentration decreases when the organism is no longer alive. We find its age by measuring the activity of its carbon-14. One application of artificial radioactivity, for example, is the PET scan, the positron emission tomography, used in medical imaging. That's it for this video. Thank you.